Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, an architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at how to use VM extensions on virtual machines on Azure and how you can use VM extensions to customize virtual machines once they've been started. On any cloud, it is hardly ever just enough to install a virtual machine. You usually need to customize that virtual machine in some way, shape, form, or fashion so it'll run the app or do whatever it is that you're trying to make that virtual machine do. Now, you could uh, log into every virtual machine and manually customize it, like you could do that through RDP on Windows or you could do that through SSH on Linux. But doing this at scale would be very hard to do. You would have to literally log into every VM. And if you have hundreds of those, that could be very time consuming and very arduous. So rather than do that, uh, Azure, as well as most every other cloud, provide some way of extending the virtual machine through extensions. Now you have packages that you can install by way of extensions and these packages accept parameters from you the user and when the VM boots for the first time you can use that package to install some kind of software. It could be um, a backup solution, it could be uh, it could be some kind of antivirus software, whatever it might be. That extension is some kind of package that is going to add some kind of functionality to that virtual machine. One of the most popular ones on uh, Azure, as well as most every cloud, is the ability to execute scripts against a virtual machine once it's been booted. So this would be an script extension that is available to you, and you can take uh, that script and run it in the virtual machine. And so that would be something like PowerShell on Windows, and it would be something like a uh, shell script on Linux. Now on Windows, with a PowerShell script, you can add it to a virtual machine to a domain, you can add new users, you can install additional software and customize the settings on that virtual machine. And it runs as an administrator, so it has high levels of permission that allow you to do uh, a number of things that you wouldn't be able to do with a normal user. Likewise, on Linux, you have the, the shell extension that will allow you to do things like add new users, install packages against from a package manager, uh, and configure that VM or tighten the security on that virtual machine with a shell script. I have here an empty resource group that I'm going to add a VM to. So I'm going to go into uh, the marketplace and then I'm going to search for Ubuntu. I'm going to select Ubuntu Server 18.04 LTS and create a Linux VM. And I'm going to install OpenVPN on this uh, using a shell script extension. So let's go ahead and create this resource. I'm going to put this into my resource group and I'll call it demo VM. And uh, I'm going to select a smaller VM size because I don't need a big beefy VM for this application. And I'm going to use password here and I'm going to set the username to me and type in a password. Oh, if I can get this password in right. And I'm going to customize the inbound port rules on the networking tab uh, so that I can really get some fine grained control over this because I want to be able to open up additional ports uh, beyond the standard SSH port. So I'm going to use standard SSD, uh, HDD disk for this. And then here on the networking tab, I'm going to create a new IP address here. I'm going to let it assign it dynamically. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, allow. Uh, do some advanced uh, network security group rules here so I can add a couple more ports in that aren't usually uh, selectable from a list. So this was the this is the OpenVPN port um, that is typically used for OpenVPN and it's the one that my script will add to this VM. And then I'm going to add in 443 which is the management site for the OpenVPN server. So it should be SSL, you know, HTTP SSL for that. So I've added those two rules uh, for inbound rules. So I should be able to access this VM for the VPN client as well as the uh, admin portal for this particular VM. Now on the um, management tab, I don't really need anything. Um, on the next tab, I have guest config, and this is where I can select extensions or I can do cloud or net. And I'm for this demo, I'm going to be using uh, extensions. So I'm going to come over here, select custom script for Linux. And then I'm going to hit create. 
and then I'm going to uh, configure this to use a shell script that I have on my local machine. Okay, now I have this ready to go. I can go over here and I can find the VPN script on my local machine here. And then I can paste in a command. But what I'm going to use is something in Notepad++ here. I've got this already defined. I'll have to come back later and update my public IP with this host name. Uh, but uh, that's the parameters that are accepted by this script. So I'm going to remove this. So it'll call it correctly and then click OK. And now I have that custom script extension ready to go. And uh, let's see if everything is kosher on this. Uh, and it's going to run validation against it. Now the validation has passed. I can click Create. And it will create. And I can come back to when this is done. Okay, now that that's done, let's go back over here to my deployments, uh, to my resource group. And then I'm going to select my demo VM. And uh, it looks like everything got deployed. Let's come back in here and take a look at my VM and let's see if everything is up and running. And so far, so good. Now I'm going to come in here to my um, IP address and I'm going to add a DNS extension to this so that it matches the one I supplied the script whenever I created it. So I'm going to go back over here to my shell script and I'm going to grab this DNS prefix and then come back over here and drop it in my DNS entry there and save it. And then with that, I can come back over to the overview tab and it should give me my DNS name. And then I can open a new tab in a browser and then let's get it out of full screen mode and then do HTTPS and drop that in. And I should be able to log into my uh, portal here. So. And there it is. Now I can create a new client and uh, configure OpenVPN using this, this script here. So with this uh, shell extension, uh, with this uh, VM extension, I was able to run a shell script inside of a Linux VM and it completely configured, installed and configured an OpenVPN server on this so that I can use this uh, VM as a, a VPN server and then connect to it from anywhere in the world. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.